Well, good morning and welcome back to my kitchen again. I just love it when y'all stop by and I have somebody to talk to and share some of the recipes that I've learned through the years growing up and since I've been married I found a few new ones. Today I'm going to make a dish that I haven't made a lot of times but I love it. Now my name is Helen Gay. I go by Gay but I was named after one of my mom's younger sisters, Aunt Helen and she had a lot of good recipes that oh my goodness they were good and this is one that I got from her and I probably wrote this back in the late 70s or early 80s, but see, generally when I write a recipe down, I'll put who I got it from, and um, usually the year. I didn't put the year on this one, but anyhow, it's got eight Helen on there, and it's her pork chop casserole, and what you do, you just salt and pepper your pork chops. You don't flour them. Salt and pepper them, and then sear them till they're brown in a skillet. And then you're going to layer them in your uh, pot. You can do a 9 by 13. I'm going to use my La Crochet today. Uh, you layer them, and then you layer an onion slice and bell pepper slices, and you pour tomatoes over them. Now, I'm going to use my homemade uh, canned tomatoes today that I put up instead of a can but you can uh, just open up a couple of cans of stewed tomatoes or diced or whatever your choice would be but when it comes time I'm gonna and that's what I'm gonna do I've got my onion rings and my pepper rings all ready to go I've got red and green bell peppers and a sweet onion so I'll have those over here ready to use in just a minute so you brown your pork chops and you put them in and then you put some onion slices and some bell pepper and you sprinkle some raw rice. Now I'm going to use a total of two cups today so I'll just uh, put it between and around the pork chops. So just know that I'm going to use two cups. And then you make a thin brown gravy and you want enough liquid in your tomatoes and your gravy to have the rice have enough liquid to cook. So you need to keep that in mind. Now I've got 32 ounces of beef broth that I'm going to use. So that would make two cups of water per cup of rice, which is about right. And then the extra will come from my two pints of canned tomatoes. Because if you don't have enough liquid in there, your rice is going to be crunchy rather than fluffy. And we like fluffy rice. So I'm going to season my pork chops with some salt. Not a whole lot because pork's kind of salty anyway. But I'm just going to sprinkle on a little salt and black pepper and um, onion and garlic powder. I just sprinkle it on. I'm going to do a few and then I will uh, finish it and I'll bring you back. See, I've just got my big old garlic here. And I just sprinkle it on like you would salt and pepper if you was putting it on something. Just You want to be able to see it, but you don't want to coat it like if it was flour. And the onion powder, the holes are a little bigger in it, so it may come out a little bit more. And that's okay because you can use a lot of onion powder and it still does not overpower your dish. I'm going to finish doing these on both sides, and then I'm going to, I'll be back and... Um, I'll be back and show you what I've done, and I'll start cooking them, and I'll show you when I start cooking them off. Okay, I have flipped the pork chops. You see they're browning on both sides. I've already got one layer in the pot with the brown pork chops, and then I layered onion and bell pepper, and you can see how I've done that. Now I'm fixing it to sprinkle some rice around on it. Just like, that, just like that, just sprinkle it on, and then I'll layer again, and I'll put all the liquid in at the very end. And, uh, well, no, I'm going to open some tomatoes and pour over this, so they'll be in among it, but uh, the, the gravy liquid will go in at the end over everything. Okay, here is what it looks like with the one pint of 
tomatoes poured over the first layer. And my other pork chops are just about ready to do the next layer. And I'll bring you back when I start making the brown gravy so I can show you how to make the thin brown gravy. And then we'll get it into the oven. It'll cook at 350 for about an hour and 15 or 20 minutes. And we'll test for doing it. Okay, y'all. Here's the uh, casserole all layered. And I've got my last layer of pork chops in with the onion and pepper rings. And I've sprinkled the rest of the rice in. And now I'm fixing to get ready to make the brown gravy. Now what I'm going to do in this same skillet, there's a, probably a tablespoon of oil left. I'm going to add about three tablespoons of oil. And I'm going to put about three or four tablespoons of um, probably equal amounts. Probably four tablespoons of flour. And I'm going to get that flour good and brown. Probably kind of like... Um, Kind of like the color of a penny. You want it to get pretty brown if you're going to make brown gravy. Now, if you're making milk gravy, you barely get it a, a creamy tan color because you don't want that uh, nutty flavor in your milk gravy. And I'll show y'all gravies one day. But today, I'm just going to brown that flour and I'm going to add my beef broth to it. And I want it to be thin. So if I've misjudged a little bit, I can add a little water to thin it some more. And then I'm going to pour it over the, um, the pot, the can, the casserole pot. And I'm going to put the lid on it and put it in the oven for like an hour to an hour and a half. I'll test for doneness at about an hour and 15 or 20 minutes. Make sure everything's done. And then I will show y'all how wonderful it is. Okay, y'all. I've got four tablespoons of oil and four tablespoons of flour in the same pan where I browned my pork chops, where I'll have that little bit of flavor from the pork chops in that little dab of oil that was left. Now I'm going to cook this till it gets the right amount of brownness on it, and I'll bring you back and show you. Then I'm going to add my four cups of beef broth to it, and I'm going to pour it into the casserole and get it in the oven. Okay, here's the brown gravy mix, uh, flour and, and oil. Normally, I would have seasoned this, but I didn't season it because I'm see I put the seasoning in my broth, and I will tell you in just a minute what I put okay. in there. I here's the gravy cooking, and I'm going to uh, cook it just a little bit to make sure that it's all blended well. And I put three tablespoons of onion powder into my broth and a teaspoon of garlic powder, a few turns of black pepper, and about a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to let that marry a little bit in the pan. And then I'm going to pour that hot liquid over into the casserole pan and get it into the oven. Now when you're making gravy, the best thing to do is to use lukewarm or room temperature liquid into your hot flour and oil mixture or it's going to just splatter and pop and get all over you and let me tell you that hurts a little tip if you get burned in the kitchen and you don't have an aloe vera playing around get you a bottle of lavender essential oil and keep it right close to your stove and if immediately you will dab some lavender oil on let me tell you you won't even have a blister so anyway, I'll bring y'all back in just a minute when I pour it over into the pot and I'm ready to get it into gravy the oven. Gravy is thin. It's very, very thin, but it's good and brown. See all that goodness? I did a taste test. The taste is very rich and it's very deep flavored with all the onion powder and the beef broth. And there you go. I've got it in there and that's exactly how we do it. Now, I'm going to make sure that I've got all the rice down in there in the liquid. And it should cook in a little over an hour. I don't want to forget to tell y'all this when I come back when it's done. I ended up just by eyeballing it, looking at it. I was afraid it would need a little more liquid. So I added two cups of water. So that makes six cups of liquid plus the two cans of the tomatoes. So just to be sure y'all know um, if you're going to make it, to go ahead and do six cups of liquid and that way you'll be sure to have enough to cook the rice and it'll still be moist. Okay, y'all, I just took the casserole out of the oven 
and um, there's what it looks like. And I did get a little bite of the rice and gravy, and oh my, it's very good. Cooked about an hour and 20 minutes at 3. And I dished up a plate where you all could see what it looks like. Let me see if I can get it close. I think it's pretty with the different colors of the peppers. And I did put a little bit of uh, green onions around on the top. But I did a little taste test just to make sure everything was done, and it's wonderful. Okay, I think we've got our times right on the cooking, and the amounts of the liquid was right. So I hope y'all make this, and hope your family enjoys some of our tried and true family recipes. Some that I've inherited from Mama, some from my aunts, and some that I just stumbled across somehow through the years. Thank y'all for coming. Come back often, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and please tell your friends about my channel, and um, hit the bell where you'll be notified when I put a new um, video Y'all have a blessed day, and I hope you have some good food on your table for supper, because we are.